Do you know that there's an industrial chemical found in your dog's food that could be causing serious health problems? My channel is all about natural pet health and wellness. And if you like what I am talking about, I'd love if you would click up there and subscribe to my channel. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. You know, what you feed your dog, it's a big, big deal. Um, pretty perplexing, it's one of the more common questions I get. You know, Dr. Jones, like, is this a good food to feed my dog? Is this safe or not? I just, read about fairly recently a, a study done at the University of Missouri and in particular they're fo focusing on a really common industrial chemical called BPA or bis bisphenol and it's something that's found in, it's in an array of different plastics so you know you look at something like a plastic water bottle I'm sure you guys have all heard of it plastic juice thing but in particular, it's especially high in canned goods. Um, when I was looking sort of into specifics of you know, BPAA in general, I mean, it, it's widespread. Um, part of the reason why it's being used in canned stuff is it, it keeps that can lasting longer. So you can, you know, you can do something like you can put your know, BPA in this can of something else uh, soup and the can's gonna last longer, the ingredients inside are going to last longer before the can does thing or starts to corrode. The problem though is that, you know, that some of that chemical, which has been around for nearly 100 years, is leaching out into whatever's inside that can. So this University of Missouri study in particular focused on canned dog food. And what they wanted to see that if they could take, first of all, they wanted to measure um, blood levels of this, this drug, BPA, and they wanted to see, you know, is, is this chemical measurable or not in dogs? Sure enough, most of us, they say 93% of people, North Americans have measurable levels of BPA in their urine and their blood. Um, also do our dogs, but they said fortunately the dogs that were on, even like this dry kibble, had sort of you know, trace amounts, m relatively small amounts of BPA. But because they know BPA is in such high concentrations in canned food, they wanted to know. So let's take these dogs off of their dry kibble, let's put, put them on canned food. Some of the foods, some of the dog, canned dog foods, generally the better ones, claim that they don't have BPA in their cans. So they took you know, some of the other foods where they're not making that claim, so they own BPAs in it. Those dogs were fed that, B, that canned food for two weeks, just a two week period, it's a relatively short period of time. And they wanted to see, you know, if I feed this, these dogs this, this canned food for the two week period, are, there, are we gonna see a measurable increase in this chemical? So, here's a can from, that's just saying the last four uh, letters end in G-R-E-E. -E. It's a common canned dog food, picked up at a local grocery store. And these guys, the dogs in the study, were fed the canned food for two week period. It's a relatively short period of time and they're measuring BP levels within their blood and likely as well within the urine. So they wanted to see, I mean, based on the baseline levels, is it gonna go up in a short period of time? So, Tua. So, I would expect it to rise. Would I expect a two week period it would go up? Maybe moderate? Good girl, here you go, Tua. So those dogs fed that food, such as the GREE -E food here, um, they saw the BPA levels increase by three times in a two-week period, which is huge. Um, first of all, I don't encourage you to feed your dog this. This is also just for video demonstration. But they saw a three-fold you know, a three -fold increase in a very short period of time, like two weeks. So that was a bit the main focus of the study, that you know, just feeding exclusively canned food is really you know, put, potentially putting your dog at health risk because you're increasing you know, measurable levels of this industrial chemical in such a short period of time. So some of the specific health concerns of BPA, first it's a known endocrine disruptor, meaning it's effect affecting your dog's entire whole and as well as our own hormonal systems. You know, based on all those you know, different glands, you know, such as the pituitary gland, 
um, the adrenal gland that are producing a whole variety of different hormones regulating all these metabolic processes throughout our, our pet's body. Secondly, it's been linked to infertility, it's been linked to cancer. Um, in the study in particular, they saw specific changes in the gut microbiome, so it was, it is, it was affecting specific bacteria within the, these dogs' guts. As well, too, they're also seeing metabolic changes. My, one of my big concerns is just looking at some of the different studies um, done in people where they're also linking you know, BPA ingestion, and they, they'll have this correlation with cancer. And just think of just the whole, whole array of chronic health conditions. Can we just link it? Is BPA the big evil chemical? No, there's a whole, so many different chemicals that are out there. But knowing full well that it's, that it's causing such a dramatic increase in such a short period of time um, should really give you, gives me a big pause for concern. You know, so then what do you do? You, you being a concerned dog owner, knowing you're wanting to do the right thing, potentially keep your dog healthy, prevent diseases in the first place, well, with little Tula here, you know, my, and I'm going to apply it to your guys' own dogs too. You want to really be thoughtful and, and not just be feeding exclusively canned food. If you are going to feed a canned food, look for a company that is, is saying that that can is BPA free. I do feed Tula some of the canned food, first made, a free run chicken formula, natural organic, um, a whole pile of super, super good quality ingredients within it. Based on the company itself, I'm much more confident knowing that they're going to make an effort to not have BPA in their cans. Secondly, part of the issue of having BPA is it's there because it's, you know, that, that food can last longer on the shelf. I mean, you can, you know, have some of those dog foods that can sit there and three years later, they still haven't expired and the can's still good. So then one of the things you may think of, I would suggest avoiding is some of the lesser expensive, the poor quality dog foods such as the GREE one here. I mean, you get this giant can for $1.50. Costs half of what I paid for her organic dog food, which is half the size. On just a, a, a personal level, as far as for us, just be really thoughtful about what we're consuming can-wise. And knowing that BPA being an endocrine disruptor, we've got this whole host of you know, people with so quote unquote class of uh, diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, you know, where they've got you know, almost like early signs of diabetes. They have issues where their pituitary gland isn't functioning normally, their adrenal gland isn't functioning normally. And in part, many of the, many of the thoughts because of that are some of these industrial, chem some of these chemicals that are in our environment that are affecting our glands in the, in the first place, we're not producing or we're producing too much or too little of specific hormones because we've damaged our glands. Which, and conceptually, that makes sense to me. So just being really thoughtful what you're consuming can-wise. And the one study I read when they talked about it, research and people, was it, of all the canned foods they measured, the highest thing was this. This canned soup, whatever the company, this just happens to be a more common company that end, ends with B-E-L-L-S. But just whatever you're going to do, you know, minimize your canned food consumption and especially your canned soup consumption. Third, in feeding our dogs, maybe you're going to be using some kibble as I do with Tula. If you're going to be feeding cans, you know, preferably natural organic, that ones that don't have BPA in them, but still just in moderation. I mean, there's no guarantee, even if it so quote unquote makes that claim. One of the things I read in the study is that some of the cans that claim to be BPA free still had BPA in them. Then third, you know, make some of your dog's food at home. So here we have yummy Kootenai Co-op lean ground beef. And for instance, Tulip really seems to like her raw food there's different beliefs whether or not you guys want to feed raw you want to cook it by all means whatever you're more more comfortable with i ad advocate a combination of both but let's try her with some raw hamburger and see what she thinks and i know it's bpa free snack time so here is our yummy raw 
these guys actually the hamburger comes from someone who was my one of my former staff at the clinic they now have a farm fairly close to here just over an hour or so away so they have grass-fed happy cows they get turned into hamburger and they're not given any hormones they're not put into a feedlot so i know it's good okay tula let's try out your hamburger good girl mm, look good girl okay good, good girl mm. So thanks you guys for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. I'd love for you to click down there to like this video. Click up there to subscribe to my channel. And lastly, click that link directly in the box below. And then when you do that and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and my free videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.